Hi, I'm Michelle Beckham Corbin, president of C3 Creating Connections Consulting, a social media strategy firm. And I'm Mark McCumber, president of McCumber Creations, and welcome to our show, Digitally Speaking. If you tuned in to our last show, we talked about um, sticky situations that uh, we humans are getting into today due to social media. It is definitely a do not miss show. We talk about everything from um, death to divorce. Um, to problems with copyright, and uh, I think the show really brings up a lot of really interesting points that, that affect all of us. So look for show number 14 on YouTube or on ACTV.org on the website. So, But today, we are going to be talking about LinkedIn, but more than talking, Mark and I are actually going to um, attempt to take you all through a tutorial. And um, the the tutorial really is going to be focused on how do we add the wow factor in your LinkedIn personal profile so that you can be discovered. Whether you're looking for a job, whether you want to make a career change, whether you are using LinkedIn to sell products or services for your company, you certainly want to be discovered. And so um, given that this show is called Digitally Speaking, we decided that uh, it's about time for us to add some digital <laughs> to our show. So uh, this is a bit of experimentation um, and we'll kind of see how it goes. I love experimentation. So we're going to have fun today. We are. Um, and, and I guess you'll just have to let me know if, if the laptop looks like it's slipping down. To I the think floor. the laptop looks very <laughs> handsome right now. So it's, it's <laughs> I should have a name for my laptop. Oh, gosh. But anyway, um, what I wanted to start off with is just a little bit about LinkedIn um, for folks that, that really don't know or, um, you know, have heard of it, are not using it, and therefore don't realize how mm -hmm. huge um, it really is. So LinkedIn today is the world's largest professional social network. Mm -hmm. And when I say professional, it's, it's not that place to share your beach pictures or, you know, to share what you had for lunch, but really to share um, information and expertise mm -hmm. in, in industries that, that you have knowledge in or, or would like some knowledge. Mm -hmm. And um, <clears throat> LinkedIn has made... Um remarkable changes over the last several years as far as its formatting and its platform um, and is now, as you say, taken certainly the lead to some degree in, in even from Facebook where folks have really realized that um, LinkedIn has really been the professional connection preferred platform. Oh, so absolutely. It's, it's now, um, even though it's, it's replicated some of Facebook's algorithms to some degree and taking on some of the looks that, that Facebook has in the way it functions, um, it still is, is a great um, way to network B2B with, with professionals. So. Absolutely. And for those of you who may not um, understand, when Mark is saying that it's taken on some of Facebook's functionality, just like on Facebook where we can like um, a statement or share something, um, you can do that on LinkedIn as well. So that's where, where those pieces come in. Now when we talk about LinkedIn, um, what we're talking about is um, a platform that's used by over 225 million people across the world. and. Uh, in terms of executives, every single Fortune 500 company has an executive presence on LinkedIn, mm -hmm. an actual personal profile. And um, LinkedIn, in addition to personal profiles, can have company pages, mm -hmm. as, as you know, Mark. Mm -hmm. And right now, there are over um, 3 million companies that have organizational pages. There are groups that you can join as well. I don't know, are you involved in any groups with a music? Couple. Or yeah, more a towards couple. your business? Yeah. Or I uh, guess music is your business, too. But Yeah, some little network groups. Um, uh, just been kind of monitoring them as how, how they function. I'm not super active with them, but I do belong to a couple of them. And... Um, they're pretty interesting. You do get to see others in your in your area. Um, I haven't used LinkedIn so much as I've used some other forums for, for things such as that, but uh, LinkedIn certainly has a lot of groups. There's no doubt about it. Well, and forum is a key word because if, if you are involved or, or belong to a group that's, that's fairly active, mm -hmm. it really is like a traditional online forum. Mm -hmm. You've got people that are sharing um, you know, links to articles, sharing sure. ideas, getting into conversations. Mm -hmm. So um, it's a great, a great way to 
not only network, and you can be a stealth person, you can kind of fly under the mm -hmm. radar and, and just use it as a great uh, place to gather information that will help you. Absolutely. Um, so yeah, the, the beautiful thing about LinkedIn is it gives you control over your own profile. You control what LinkedIn has to say about you, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Again, mm -hmm. how, to, how to get that wow factor um, into your profile. So when you're on LinkedIn, um, you can see two views initially, the home view and um, the profile view. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the home view. I think if you're not really super familiar with LinkedIn, you should really set aside a good 15 or 20 minutes and take the time to see all of the information that is housed um, within those spaces. So for example, um, whether you're in home or profile, you're going to see um, a toolbar across the screen that will refer to home, profile, network, jobs, interests, etc. And under each one of those pieces, there will be a drop down menu with some additional choices. So you really want to familiarize yourself with that. Um, if you look at the top right, there are some icons. There's an envelope icon, um, there's a flag, there is a, a ghost figure, and then your own picture. And uh, the first is for mail. The flag is just notification, similar to Facebook, to let you know that somebody has interacted with you in some way. And um, the little ghost figure is a way to um, add contacts. And then the very far right, the little teeny picture of yourself, and if there isn't a picture there, that's a major problem, which we're going to talk about in a little while. As so Mark and I mentioned before, uh, Mark's not a fan of ghost people, <laughs> and companies aren't either. No, it's always nice to know who you're doing business with, you know. Yeah, so where that little picture is, that is where your settings are. There's a drop-down menu there, and you're able to, to get to um, settings, and, and you're able to optimize them. So I just wanted to point out a couple of key places on the home screen. Um, the first is you're going to see where the green check mark is, a... Um, toy, kind of a, a space, and that's where you can share an update. And you can add a file, add a photo, add a link, anything that you want to share with your network um, or share publicly. Here's a little hint. Um, if the content really is for public consumption, I would choose public all of the time because it just gets your information into the eyes of, of, of a, a larger audience. Um, the other piece that I want to show um, towards the right column in the middle is the section that says your LinkedIn network. And that is where LinkedIn will let you know the number of connections that you have um, and how many people um, have, have recently joined your network um, in recent days. So then moving forward into the profile view, um, there are some places where LinkedIn's algorithm is in play. So there's a section that says people you may know, mm -hmm. and you'll see you know, a couple of uh, faces, and again, unless you've got some of those ghost people. Mm -hmm. And LinkedIn kind of does runs its algorithm, and it determines from people that you already connected to and who they may be connected to, as well as some other things, who you are most likely to know. Mm -hmm. And so you have that ability to look at those folks and say, Wow, LinkedIn is just unbelievable. I, I know every single one of these people. Mm -hmm. um, or, you know, other folks, you may say that was a stretch. But you have an opportunity to take a look at that. The other thing that you can find out is um, who has viewed your profile mm -hmm. and um, what kind of reach your updates have. So when you take the time to share an update, whether it's your own thoughts or an article with your personal spin mm -hmm. on it, LinkedIn will let you know how many people viewed your post how many people liked it, how many people shared, how many people commented. What LinkedIn is looking for is engagement. Mm -hmm. They're looking for people who are active on the profile and are not using it as a place to just house their resume information. Mm -hmm. And so you may be thinking, well, you know, why do I need to be active? Well, number one, and I don't mean you, Mark, because I know mm -hmm. you know the answer to this, but for the viewing audience, um, when you are active, you are showing that activity to your network, number one. So people are seeing your name pop up. Number two, when you are active, that activity level is factoring into LinkedIn's algorithm mm -hmm. so that if somebody were searching for someone, let's say, um, you know, social media marketing specialist, someone who had been very active and doing a lot of sharing 
would come up higher in the search results than someone who wasn't active on LinkedIn at all. Mm -hmm. So that's just kind of an, an important piece. So what I wanted to do was kind of start off with the box that we see on a profile. To me, it looks like the old Rolodex cards. Mm -hmm. Remember those days of, of Rolodex yep. cards? Yes. And that's called the LinkedIn snapshot. And that's where a lot of the key information is housed, information that people are probably going to look at first when they come across your profile. So the first thing you're going to notice um, is your name. Um, there are five places on LinkedIn for you to be able to optimize your profile for search. So think of mm. search engine optimization. What are the keywords that can be um, contained within my profile that will help it come up in search? And one of those areas is your name. And some people may think, well, how do I change my name? <laughs> Although I, I have actually seen people be very creative and um, you know, put in some other words, let's say Michelle Beckham real estate agent or something like that. Mm -hmm. But but if you certainly if you have um, an advanced degree, that's something that will help to optimize mm -hmm. um, your profile. So for myself, I have um, an MBA, Masters in Business Administration. So my name has um, has the degree right after it. The next portion is um, something called a headline. And I think a lot of people make the mistake in thinking that the headline is your job title. Mm -hmm. And it's so much more than your job title. There's a lot more space there, um, mm -hmm. far beyond bank vice president, et cetera. It's an opportunity for you to use those keywords to really help describe what it is that you bring to the table and then also to help you to be found. So, Mark, I haven't looked at yours. Um, I know I don't think you've got yours pulled up. Do you recall what whether you have pulled in all of the aspects of, of your background, kind of the music and the design together, or are you using a job title mm -hmm. kind of piece? Or Currently, I'm looking, looking on, on my iPad, which gives me a different view than my computer. Uh, oddly enough, it doesn't, it's not the same format for some reason when, huh. I, when I come up on my iPad. But um, I, I've, I've used that, and I actually took your uh, advice some time ago and changed quite a bit of that so that it did it, it did give, give a better history of of because I've done quite a few things professionally and um, it gave a broader range rather than just kind of listing oh you know skills per se I've kind of listed them so they can really say oh this guy's done this 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 and he's Does the full got story. a pretty broad range um, amount of experience and variety of different things but um, yeah, but there's an art form to this. I there mean, there, is. Re there really is an art form to this. And sculpting your LinkedIn profile, probably a lot more, of course, since it's a professionally based platform, um, so much more critical and important to um, this as it would be to Facebook or, or even to some degree your website. Because I think um, even though websites are, websites are taking such a secondary level sometimes to, is, in, from individual standpoints, um, maybe not a big business or a corporation, but from individuals, because LinkedIn is really, really becoming, you know, the place to find out about somebody professionally and career-wise. Oh, yeah. So um, there's so much flexibility within the new LinkedIn look of what you can do to make sure you're getting your message out about who you are and what you do. Absolutely, and you're right. I think today LinkedIn almost looks like a mini website yeah. because you have the ability um, to not only share what your uh, work experience is, mm -hmm. but to add content to that. And, and we'll show, um, show have some screenshots of that for everyone. But you have the ability to um, share video, mm -hmm. share photographs, share portfolios mm -hmm. of work, yeah. um, Word documents. I mean, you name it. If you have anything that really kind of gives evidence or, or credence to, mm -hmm. to the work that you've done, mm -hmm. to be able to see visually, then you can add that to LinkedIn. So, um, so moving forward, um, the name and the headline are, are two places that you can optimize your profile for search. So, for example, um, mine, and I'll just read it, it doesn't just have my job title. It says, Strategic Social Media Marketing, Speaker, Trainer, P&G Alum, Owner, C3 Creating Connections Consulting, a social media firm. So there's a lot of information packed um, in, in that profile. And, um, and then I can be discovered for any 
any of those, uh, those items that I've listed. The next piece that's very important, um, not only to search engine optimization, but in telling your story, is the summary statement. And this is a mistake I see a lot of people um, having. They neglect to add the summary statement to their profile. Mm -hmm. And to me, that's just crazy. That is your marketing vehicle. I believe it's 2,000 characters um, that LinkedIn gives you to tell what you're all about, you know? For you, we, we just mentioned mm -hmm. that you've got so many different aspects mm -hmm. to the work that you do, and it, your creative side, and building, and designing, and, and music, and that's a great place to be able to pull all of that together and share with the world why someone would, should do business with you because mm -hmm. of what you bring to the table. Mm -hmm. So um, I actually recently redid mine. Mm -hmm. um, I hadn't changed mine for years just because I'm so busy helping everyone else change theirs. And then uh, finally I said, you know what, I, I really need to kind of walk the talk and, and yeah, revisit right. mine. So so I did and I actually found a couple of uh, neat little things. Mm. Um, you can Go to, we had a little talk on our last show about emoticons, mm -hmm. but you can go to, um, and I don't know what the technical term is, but for a, a website that has all the little characters and symbols, mm -hmm. and you can copy those and actually insert them into your profile. Uh -huh. So I've added little arrows and carrots and different things that um, hopefully people will be able to see on the screen that have made my profile stand out. Mm -hmm. So there's some visual things. That's a, a little hint for you guys. But even with a summary, you can add content. So I actually have several of our digitally speaking shows right there at the bottom of my summary statement on LinkedIn. Oh. And the beautiful thing about it is when you click on the video to play it, it doesn't take you outside. You can actually view the video from inside LinkedIn. Oh, so it, oh that's, that's a nice feature. Yeah. It doesn't, doesn't throw you out of the platform. No, and, and, and just uh, because of our wonderful editors at ACTV, Mark, you are the lead picture on um, the show on uh, reputation management. Cool. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. My reputation precedes me. <laughs> <laughs> so the summary statement is going to be really key. Um, we already talked about the experience blocks. Mm -hmm. I know one question that people ask, um, especially for uh, folks that are over 40, is um, how far back do I need to go? And what I say is, um, you know, no more than, than three jobs, unless your, your jobs were very short-lived, right? Mm -hmm. Like six months or a year. I mean, obviously, mm -hmm. you can go back further than that. But if you've had some pretty long stints at companies, you really don't need to go um, past um, the, 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 the previous three uh, mm -hmm. positions. And then uh, the other piece that um, is going to be really uh, key is um, recommendations. Whenever someone can get some recommendations on their LinkedIn profile, boy, does that just raise your social credibility. Mm -hmm. When I can go to a profile and see what someone's manager, client, coworker said about them, and it's mm -hmm. and it's good, mm -hmm. then that gives me uh, just you know some some good mm -hmm. information to work with in terms of dealing with that person on my own. Um, along with that, another key area for the profile and for search are skills. Mm -hmm. And I know you and I have talked about that before. Um, think of your skills as keywords that not only kind of connote what you do, but that are the right keywords that a company or another person would be using in search, whether it's LinkedIn search mm -hmm. or Google search, to find someone with mm -hmm. your background. Mm -hmm. So you may call something, you know, X, Y, Z, but maybe the more popular term for that skill is ABC. Mm -hmm. And so you need to make sure that you're using the correct language. Mm -hmm. And um, when you have the skills listed, you will have um, a diagram similar to what you're seeing on your screen right now, where um, you have uh, a list of skills and you can see all of the faces of the people who have, rec who have um, endorsed you. Mm -hmm. And when you hover over the face, the um, little box pops up, kind of the um, snapshot box of who they are. So again, we can see you know, social media marketing. Um, if you scan through and you see that other social media marketers are endorsing me, boy, what does that say? Mm -hmm. When my colleagues 
mm-hmm. are, are saying that I know peer what I'm talking about. Yeah. yeah. So so I, I think that really is is huge for, for social credibility. So um, the other piece that I want to mention is that there are several um, additional pieces that you can add to LinkedIn. So your main portions are going to be your information, everything that's in that snapshot, your name, your headline, the summary, your work experience. But beyond that, um, there are some other areas. Obviously, education. Mm-hmm. Um, you want to list that. I, I, I say for people... You don't need to list high school at all. It's not necessary unless you happen to have attended a high school that's that's really well known, either regionally or even nationally. Mm-hmm. So for Cincinnati, let's say St. Xavier, mm-hmm. not only is a name here in the city, but it's it's a name outside of the city as well, and it's it's known for its huge network of alums, mm-hmm. and so that would be um, a, a great one to add. Um, Additionally, some other areas that you can add are volunteer experiences and causes. And so if you're very involved in um, one of those, you can add that in, talk about your role, add, add photos from it, etc. cetera. Um, any honors and awards that you might have received. Um, certifications, which I would imagine in, in your business with design and building, mm-hmm. you probably have, the, have some certifications. Lots of ability for that, absolutely. Uh, publications. Um, I am a co-author of a social media book, so I have that publication listed. So if you've um, even written um, an article for a blog or um, a magazine, you can add that in. Projects. Mark and I have Digitally Speaking, this show, Mm -hmm. as a project listed on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. And the beautiful thing about projects is, um, I think, I can't remember if you, I think you created it, and you can add the folks that are involved with the project. Mm -hmm. So if you're on my LinkedIn and you're looking at the project, you see Mark's face right there, and you can see that he is part of the project. Um, Any languages that you speak, um, especially for those um, high-profile languages that are always really in need, Mm -hmm. um, that would be great for companies to know that you have that ability. Any patents that um, you've created, um, any additional uh, information that you want to share, any interests that you have. And then another piece that people kind of forget, there's a section called advice for contacting. Mm -hmm. And you may think, well, what's that all about? There's a contact section that when you click on it, it gives you my phone number, my, you know, website, email address if I've put it there. But LinkedIn gives you a little box where you can, in your own words, share with people how you would like to best connect. Mm -hmm. Whether it's um, a message saying, I prefer to receive emails only, whether you're a business and you want to take that time to say, we're really recruiting for sales folks, contact us at this number during the month of July Mm -hmm. to get an interview. I mean, whatever it is, you have that opportunity Mm -hmm. to share, share that information with people. And it's it's changeable. Yes. Situations change. Yep. This week, I can only be reached here. So. That, that's right. You can go in and, and make changes <clears throat> to your profile um, absolutely at any time. But those are the key elements that you want to take a look at um, for LinkedIn. And if, if you really work on all of those pieces, um, you truly will see that you'll um, your profile will come up mm-hmm. more often in search and more people will be looking at your profile. And hopefully your connections will will, will rise. One of the cool things I think it's interesting about <clears throat> um, LinkedIn and, and, and different from websites and something that maybe standardizes um, things a bit and puts it into a template that, that um, is really comprehensive. Um, you know, people get creative with websites and a lot of the thing about websites is that you can be really artistic with them. You can do a lot of different things with them. But the thing that's nice about this to some degree is that, that it standardizes things into a template that everybody reads, gets used to really easy. And there's something to that systematized um, template, if you will. I know folks that aren't even doing websites anymore that are saying, I get everything I need right on, on between LinkedIn and maybe Facebook and between that and my tweet account. And I don't, I don't even need to maintain that. These are smaller businesses right. or individuals, mm-hmm. uh, mind you, and not big corporations or someone that has a huge message and mission to get out that they need a full-blown website to do it. But this is really um, solving a lot of um, smaller entrepreneurs, uh, individuals, uh, needs and provides a forum that has something that a website doesn't have. 
And the, that is that social network connection where you have access to all of these people and choice over it as opposed to trying to drive someone to a website whether you need them, that you either have to find and figure out a way to capture somebody's email that you can send to them to get them hooked up to your website or get somebody to follow you on your website. This is, is a really viable option to that. And um, I think that's where LinkedIn has really got kind of a leg up on a lot of things. Um, yeah, and, and, and you know, unlike Twitter, mm -hmm. LinkedIn is actually making money. They have a lot of paid services mm -hmm. that um, for the right person and in the right situation are really definitely worth looking into. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, it's, it's a platform that is here to stay, and they've done a, a fantastic job of, of kind of changing with the times and, and adding things that people mm -hmm. really are looking for and, and can really use. They've grown very quick. Yeah. I mean, they really, really, really have. And um, gives you, again, just another way to get into the social media um, to some degree. I know folks who say, well, I don't mess with Facebook at all. I just use LinkedIn exclusively. Right. Because I really just want my it's professional professional right so um what a what a great uh what a great mechanism for people to professionally get get the word out about themselves and about their businesses and is morphing and changing maybe not quite the same way that facebook is but but has gone through some great changes really solid changes that have really made their platform um really viable and competitive now so great way to get the message out to uh, going to buy ads on something. Well, and actually LinkedIn has a great advertising platform too, which yeah. is a source of a, a, a talk for another day. But I, I did want to close by saying, we kind of were joking around about the ghost figures, mm -hmm. but you absolutely want to have a picture on LinkedIn for a variety of reasons. It affects the algorithm negatively if you don't have one. Plus, people want to do business with people they can see. Absolutely. So don't remain faithless on Facebook or LinkedIn. It's a very important hot tip here from Digitally Speaking. And um, Michelle, thank you. That was, that was awesome. And we've tried some new technology today. We've got some great over-the-shoulder shots of, of you on your laptop. And we've got our new little ready cam. We should give them a name. I was going to say, you said, what should you name your computer? And I say, if he's a man or a male computer, we call him Tosh. And if it was a girl, we call him Sheba. So... <laughs> Having said that, ladies and gentlemen, thank you once again for watching Digitally Speaking here, and we really appreciate you um, joining us weekly here. And so on behalf of myself and Michelle and ACTV, thanks for joining us, and we've got more hot topics coming your way, so uh, tune in. Thank you. Thank you.